Hey everybody, it's James at dreamweavertutorial.co.uk. We're going to be building an image gallery. We will create some class attributes and insert a Polaroid effect background image with a layered alpha transparency drop shadow. We will then attach the jQuery Lightbox plugin and when a visitor clicks upon one of the thumbnail images, a larger version of the image will animate into the center stage of your website. The web visitor can then choose whether to cycle through the rest of the gallery by clicking on the previous or next buttons, or can view each image individually. Okay, so all of the files are included, including the thumbnails and the background images. Um, so if you want to click on the link, go to my website and just below the video you'll see a icon which says download Dreamweaver exercise files. If you click on that and then save the file to your desktop, so once you've unpacked the zip folder and you've saved it to your desktop you should be left with a folder and that folder will be called Lightbox. Now if we click on Lightbox what you'll see inside is a CSS folder, an images folder and a JavaScript folder. Inside the CSS folder you get all the CSS required to uh, run the jQuery Lightbox plugin. We'll also be creating our own style sheet as well. Inside the images folder you'll get a background Polaroid image. You get all of the buttons that make the um, effects work and you'll get the large versions and the thumbnail versions in a separate folder for the images. Okay, so if we have a look at the JavaScript folder, you'll have the Lightbox plugin JavaScript file, you'll have the jQuery library which is on the left, and you've got the jQuery Lightbox file on the right, the minified version, and that will make the effects work and it will hook onto the CSS document, etc. Okay, and now there's also a notepad file, and that's got the JavaScript hooks that we need to set up to make the whole effect work. Okay, so here we are in Dreamweaver and uh, we're going to define a new site. So we'll go up to the site button, press that site, then we'll go new site and we're going to call the site Lightbox. And uh, we're going to find a local root folder. This mine's on my desktop if you want to put it in any site folder you want to so you can access it from there. And um, the name of the folder obviously is Lightbox, so mine is desktop slash Lightbox. Now the images folder is just off of the main root folder and it's called images so that will be lightbox slash images and then press OK. OK so if you set everything up correctly you should have a folder in your files panel called lightbox. Uh, inside of that will be a folder called CSS, a folder called images, a folder called JavaScript or JS and a text document called jQuery for head. Okay, so you'll notice inside the images folder you've got a separate folder with the thumbnail images. That's so it's easier to find the thumbs and, and so you won't get confused with the larger images. Inside the main images folder you've got the Polaroid background there as well. And uh, you should have all your JavaScript and the text document. Right, so first things first, we're going to uh, open up a new uh, file. So we're going to go File New and we want a XHTML 1.0 transitional uh, document. I'm going to split the body tags and we're going to create an all encompassing wrapper div. So I'm going to type in div id equals and I'm going to call it wrapper. And I'm going to end that with a closing comment so we know that's the end of the wrapper div. Okay, so once you've put in your closing comment, and I hope you're using your closing comments, we're going to create another div with an ID of gallery, and that's going to contain our gallery items. So div ID equals gallery, and I'm going to close that again with a closing comment, end of the gallery div. Okay, now because each image is going to pretty much be the same, it's going to be set out the same, it's going to have the same background image and the only difference is it will have its own thumbnail, we'll set it up as a class. So this will be div class, um, which is obviously classes are repeatable along a page. So div class holder and that's going to be like our framework for uh, the actual gallery image. So I'm going to end that with the end holder class comment. Okay, now every time we create the class holder, we're going to want to put an image inside of it. So I'm going to create another class and we're going to call that div class equals thumb and that's going to hold our thumbnail image. So we've just set the div tag for it, we still have to style it to make it fit inside of the class holder. So I'm going to end that with a closing comment of end thumb class. Now for every thumbnail that we have as well, we want a title. So making sure we're still inside the holder div we're going to create a div class called title. So div class equals open quotes and title and I'm also going to end that with a closing comment so it's the end of the title class. 
So we've got a holder class, which is our framework. We're going to put a thumbnail image inside of that and a title tag inside of that. OK, now just take a moment, pause the video, make sure you've got the whole setup that I have here. So we've got the opening uh, wrapper, inside that we've got the gallery, and then inside the gallery we've got the holder class, thumb class and title class. Now uh, we'll be copying and pasting the holder classes and thumb classes later um, to make up the rest of our thumbnail images. But for now, click inside the div ID wrapper and we'll create a new CSS rule by going to the new CSS rule button. And I'm going to define it in a new style sheet file and click OK and you, you can save it into your CSS folder that come with the download and I'm going to call the style sheet lightbox and press save. Now I'm going to press OK. Now before we go into style the rest of um, the document uh, in the CSS we're going to create all of the rules from here. So I'm going to click inside Div ID Gallery, click on the new CSS rule button, press OK and then OK again and I'm going to keep doing that till I create all of the classes that I need and all of the um, CSS rules that I need and then we can go in and style the uh, CSS rules on mass. So I'm quite literally just clicking inside of the div classes or the div um, IDs and I am pressing the create a new CSS rule button and then I'm just pressing OK and then OK and making them less specific if I need to. OK, so once they're all set up, you can go to the right of the source code. There's the uh, CSS file you created and there's the rules that you just created, the empty rules. So we're going to start styling those now. OK, so the first um, ID I am going to target is the wrapper div, the all-encompassing wrapper. I'm going to set a height of 2000 pixels. That's to just give us a nice little space from top to bottom to work with there. Um, now I'm going to set the width to automatic. So width colon auto semicolon. Okay, now I'm going to put in the body tag. So I'm going to type in body, open and close curly braces, and I'm going to put in a background. So I'm going to type background dash color colon, and I'm going to set to nice blue color, which will be pound nine cf, and press semicolon. You'll see that it appears in the background there. OK, I'm going to style the gallery now, so it's pound wrapper pound gallery, or you could just have it as pound gallery in yours if you wanted to. Um, now to know how, we're going to put four in a row, so I'm going to check the Polaroid image and see what the width is, and we can see it's 225 pixels in width by 250 pixels in height. So if we're going to put four in a row, then it's going to be 900 pixels width. So I'm going to type in width colon, 900 pixels, and then that with a semicolon. OK, so I want the gallery to appear in the center of any web page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the margin on the left to auto and the margin on the right to auto. And what that will do is it will center it into the center of, of the browser window. So it will be right slap bang in the middle there. OK, and you'll see that on this on the design view page it has done just that. OK, so I'm going to set a margin top. I just want to push it down from the top of the browser window by 75 pixels. So I'm going to put margin dash top colon 75 pixels semicolon. You see that it drops down there. That looks good. OK, now I'm just checking the dimensions of the Polaroid image again because we're going to tell the holder class what height and width it needs to be. And again, it's 225 in width and 250 pixels in height. So we go back into the CSS. I'm going to go into pound gallery dot holder, so the holder class. And I'm going to set a width of 225 pixels. I'm going to set a height of 250 pixels and that will perfectly contain that Polaroid background image. So now I'm going to put the background image in. I'm going to type in background dash image colon. I'm going to browse for the, the actual image. Click inside the images folder and select the Polaroid image from there. And you'll see that it appears in a large preview window on the right. OK. Brilliant. OK, so press OK and put a semicolon on the end and then click inside the design view and you'll see that it appears there in the center of the uh, background of the holder class. OK, now you're going to notice um, a rectangle at the top there. That's your unstyled div thumb and your unstyled div um, title. So they're just sitting there waiting to be styled. And the next st styling we're going to set is for the thumbnail. So we're going to put a thumbnail image in and it's going to fit inside of that grey background there. 
Now if I go inside the thumbnail folder and check the image, I'll see that it's a width of 140 pixels and 120 pixels in height. So that's what we're going to set inside of our CSS for that now, so it can contain that thumbnail image.